Hello you lot, Miller Corner here, welcome back once again and welcome to my rather natty new Poland cap which I'm wearing as a result of the hat hair I've got from wearing the helmet from riding my Yamaha YBR125. Now that's a tenuous link. Anyway, you'll have to ignore the noise in the background because just as I press record on the camera, some construction work started just over there. So, um, sorry about that. To business. I asked you last week what video you wanted to see for my first one with my first bike in 2019 and the votes had it you wanted to know the cost of it you wanted to know how much I paid to get on two wheels for the very first time it actually took a fair bit of working out considering all the costs all the things I had to buy and to pay for to get myself on that little Yamaha over there the good news is I've done it so I've got a comparison sheet on my phone of the costs for getting a bike on the road and how much I paid for my first year of driving a car as well so we can actually get an idea is getting a bike actually that much cheaper than getting a car at 17 years old in the UK it's worth bearing in mind all the costs I'm going to give you are subjective it considers my first bike my Yamaha YBR 125 and my first car my 2002 Fiat 600 Sporting it also considers the specific insurance that I got and of course the specific amount of driving lessons it took for me to pass my test but it should give you a general idea if you're 17 18 years old and you're thinking should I get a bike can I afford to get a car which is going to work out more cost effective it will give you some idea of what you should be able to afford if you're going to ride a bike in the UK of any engine size and no matter what age you are the first thing you'll need is compulsory basic training often referred to as a CBT essentially this is a day of training learning how to ride a bike how to pull away how to stop safely wiggling it around in a figure of eight in a car park somewhere and then going out for a very short 30 mile an hour ride around the local town for me this cost £105 with an insurance waiver in place just in case I crashed the bike. For what it's worth, I didn't. Next up, once you've actually passed your CVT, you need all the stuff to go and ride the bike. Let's start with the riding suit I'm wearing. This jacket and these trousers came together as a two-piece suit and I went for armoured Kevlar as much as I possibly could because I know that coming off a bike, it's not comfortable. So you want the most amount of Kevlar you can to guarantee that you'll be safe hopefully if not when you do crash. I got the suit together with these riding gloves and I chose these particular ones that I actually wore the same exact ones on my compulsory basic training mostly because they've got armoured knuckles on them. Once again you want as much protection as you possibly can get. The armoured riding suit together with the gloves I got as a deal off eBay for £90 delivered. The next and most obvious expense is a helmet to protect your head again if you do come off. Helmets are mandatory and a legal requirement to ride a bike in the UK and I chose this LS2 flip-up model. There is some debate over the safety of flip-up crash helmets on bikes but I wear glasses and if you do wear glasses in a helmet having a flip-up one is the easiest possible way to get them on. This one cost me £70 delivered off eBay. Next up you'll need some boots. You can wear standard shoes or boots on a bike but I wanted some specifically for biking to make sure they'd be tough enough to cope with it and they'd be completely well weatherproof. They were quite pricey at 40 quid but frankly you do feel the benefit. They're hugely comfortable, they're completely weatherproof and they're very very good at keeping the heat in. As the building site continues to make noise just behind the camera we're now on to the big expense. You've bought your riding suit, your helmet, your boots, your gloves, you've had your compulsory basic training, you're ready to actually go and buy yourself a trusty two-wheeled steed. I went with the YBR125 on the basis it would be a good combination of relatively cheap to buy and relatively cheap to insure. We'll come onto that cost in just a moment. I bought this 07 model with a little bit over 10,000 miles on it for £790, thanks to a last minute auction win again off eBay. However, when I bought it, I found that the throttle twist was completely knackered. It didn't go back to center and that meant that the throttle would keep itself wide open even when you'd let it off completely. Not exactly ideal for someone who's just learning how to ride a bike. As a result I went and bought an official OEM Yamaha replacement and that cost me 20 quid. So for the sake of an argument the total cost of this 11, 12 year old 10,000 mile bike was £810. Then we come on to road tax. To put any vehicle on the road in the UK you have to pay the government money to not maintain them. In the case of this 125cc bike as with all of them it was £17 for the year. Not a lot but it is another expense. 
Meanwhile, there was the next biggie, the insurance. Insurance is a lot at a young age, no matter what vehicle you have in the UK. It's just a given, your insurance is gonna cost a small fortune. But for this, actually not as bad as I expected. I went for comprehensive insurance with Bennett, who incidentally are the title sponsor for the British Superbike Championship at time of recording. However, they are not the title sponsor for this video, so I want to make it plain, they have not paid me to go with them or to mention them in this video. It's just a fact of the matter is, they were the cheapest people that could get me bike insurance. For a full 12 months with Bennett on monthly instalments, it's costing me £383.77 for the year. It's worth bearing in mind I'm not keeping a 125 for a full 12 months but if you're just getting into biking you might well be doing that particularly because at 17 or 18 you actually can't go on to anything bigger until you're 19 and also this is an apples to apples yearly cost comparison so looking at every cost associated with my first year of biking namely the CBT the riding suit the gloves the helmet the boots the bike itself the road tax to put it on the road and the insurance to make sure that if I do kill myself or someone else I'm not murdered financially the total cost of one full year of 125cc biking for me was £1,515.77. To put that into perspective, what I'm now going to do is compare it to how much my first year of driving a car cost. First up, learning to drive. Now my driving lessons, to be perfectly honest with you, I didn't keep a note of how much it cost me, but I do remember it being a pretty much rounded figure of £300. Next up was learner insurance, because I actually insured my car as a learner driver so I could go out for additional lessons with my dad in between my main driving lessons. I paid for three months of learner insurance at £33 a month and you guessed it, that means it was £99 for three months of learner insurance. My next cost was the theory test, which for those of you that don't know is basically what it says on the tin. It's a written exam that you actually do on a computer so it's not written at all. You answer a load of trivia questions about driving, what do certain road signs mean, how long should it take you to stop from certain and distances and then you do something called hazard perception where you watch a bit of footage of a car driving along and you click whenever there is meant to be some sort of hazard like a car pulling out to sit down in front of that computer click a few buttons and basically take an exam it costs 23 pounds following that was the driving test itself where again you essentially pay to spend an hour in a car with an examiner laying down in the passenger seat and somewhat aggressively in my case analyzing everything you do behind the wheel to do that, it cost me £62. My first car was a 2002 Fiat Seicento Sporting. If you didn't know that, you probably haven't been to this channel before. Now, my Fiat Seicento Sporting, I actually don't recall the purchase price for, but what I can tell you is a relatively good condition Seicento Sporting with the kind of mileage, with the kind of condition that mine was when I got it, will estimate the value at around about 500 quid. Next, there was the main insurance, and this can be a killer for 17 year olds wanting to drive. In my case, it wasn't a killer, but it was a fairly good smack in the guts, that's for sure. I went for a black box policy because at 17 that's pretty much the only way you could afford car insurance with Admiral, who once again aren't sponsoring this video. For one year's driving with Admiral on a black box policy, which is actually a fairly good one as these things go with no curfew, no bad driving penalties or anything else like that, I paid £994.46. Once you've insured your car, you obviously need to pay the tax and in my case, 12 months tax for the Seicento was £155. That brings to an end my expenses for my first full year of driving, including learning how to drive. The total expenditure for my first full year of driving a car on the road, £2,133.46. That's right, getting a car on the road for my first full year at 17 was over six hundred pounds more than it cost to put a bike on the road. It goes without saying that a lot of people just can't flat out afford a car at 17, which is why they either have to get a bike because it's so much cheaper, or they actually have to take public transport. I'm very grateful for the fact that I managed to pretty much walk straight out of school at 17, get a job, and work towards affording a car. But that said, as I've hopefully shown you today, getting a bike is considerably cheaper. But the big question is, having spent 1550 pounds to learn how to ride a bike and all the legal bits get all the riding gear and buy my Yamaha YBR125 
Is it worth it? Of course it is. Biking is one of the best things I ever decided to do. It's relatively cheap to do compared to getting a car at any age, let alone as a young driver where car insurance is just stupid. And even if you factor cost out of the equation, even if this costs just as much as getting a car, I still would have done it because it's so much damn fun. Even the most bare bones basic car still gives you a certain degree of a sense of security. You're not going to fall off of it. You don't have to lean it into a corner. A bike you do, it's all down to you. And that alone, that rawness, that pure experience, that back to basics, it's all down to you thing that I keep going on about is missing from all modern cars. Biking hasn't lost that. Progress on from these initial little 125s and build up to something bigger and even more exciting. Is it worth it? Absolutely it is. We're all about affordability on this channel. I love cheap thrills. I love affordable, nuggety little cars. I love bargain alternatives, which is why second-hand superheroes exist. And I love biking, because it's a really, really cheap way to have a bit of fun. Much like the fun that I'm having right now. <laughs> Thanks very much for watching, everybody. I really hope you enjoyed this little breakdown of the initial startup costs of getting a motorcycle, at least a little 125, in the UK. Let me know what biking content you want to see next because there's plenty more to come to the channel this year and make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon so you know to buy when it happens and I'll catch you very soon everybody. Have a brilliant rest of your day. Thanks very much for watching and have a good one. Woohoo!